On this podcast, we're answering questions about biomimicry. What's biomimicry? Well, that's the first question Dr. Vahab Durgesh, Associate Professor of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Idaho, answers. Here we go! Hi, my name is Everly. I go to Grace Jordan Elementary, and my question is, why is biomimicry called biomimicry? The way the word itself is bio mimicry, copying that life. And so uh, we try to look at nature and what they have done over millions of years and we try to copy that. Instead of reinventing the wheel, we are just copying what was done, what is done by nature and make our own device or solve that problem. So that's why it's called biomimicry because we are copying what is in nature. Hi, my name is Alyssa. My question is how long has biomimicry been researched for? Humans have been getting inspiration from nature for a very long time and simple one like one of the oldest one which I can think of is the idea of Da Vinci where he looked at the uh, flight flight of bird and tried to design his flight apparatus where he uh, had a flapping wing which he thought will lift people and people can fly. Hi, my name is Mia and my question is how do scientists understand and think to know what to do when it comes to biomimicry? As a scientist, uh, if I have a problem and I am looking for a question or a solution for a problem, uh, I look at nature, how nature has overcome those those things. Like if I am looking at uh, how to make my ship move efficient or reduce the drag. So I look at in nature how uh, nature has done with uh, fish big fish, small fish or some some different scenarios and get inspiration from there. Hi, my name is Nora. I go to Grace Jordan Elementary and my question is, what animals do humans mostly focus on to help us in our everyday life? Almost all of them because they have evolved over millions of years and every animal has some unique trait. Like we look at ant to figure out how these things, how they communicate and they have a traffic free environment where they move move things and you can see ant moving continuously and so people are looking at that kind of the scenario where how to pass the information efficiently so that uh, there is no traffic jam in our system. Uh, uh, we look at bird to how they fly, how they reduce their drag, how they soar and all of those things. So th- almost all of these animals uh, help in uh, answering some of the questions because they have evolved over time and they are like the best version of what nature has to provide at this point. My name is Denali and my question is what would happen if biomimicry didn't exist? We would have been reinventing the wheels. So suppose if you would not have uh, looked at nature to find those solutions, we would have been redoing the things which nature has done over time and we would be reinventing this example of a Velcro, like if you would have not looked at the nature, so engineer would not have looked at the nature and come up with that idea of Velcro, how to design it, uh, it would have been, uh, we would have been trying to figure out how to do that. So it takes more time and it might not, we might not have reached to that same answer or in a shorter period of time. Like, Hi, my name is Issa and how can biomimicry help people? Uh, one of the example is like if you look at gecko and how they climb on the uh, flat surface, they stick to everywhere. So there is a uh, idea where people are looking at what happens on gecko leg and this uh, fingers and how what kind of structures are there. And they are trying to mimic that to create something which is highly adhesive and can move on a very flat surface. So it has a lot of application in that, that area. Hi, my name is Miriam. How can biomimicry help with po- daily life problems? And can biomimicry solve pollution problems? Yes, one of the easiest one which I can think of or the common one is like if we can figure out how to make uh, efficient flight, uh, efficient swimming devices. These will reduce the uh, greenhouse gas emissions significantly and the, it has ability to remove pollutions. The filtering apparatus which we are working on is like one of those things where we can remove the particle particulate matter from the water and that's it. Hi, my name is Zuma Hoza and my question is what types of jobs use biomimicry? 
So any like uh, as an engineer or a scientist, if you are working on any problem, that's that's where we'll look at biomimicry as potential source of solution. So uh, any science related job can be considered where you will look at biomimicry. Hi, my name is Dulce, and my question is: What what animals help scientists the most with biomimicry? There is no one animal which we can say is the most useful for biomimicry. Everyone has evolved, every animal has evolved with some specific set of uh, traits and pattern and things like a lily li leaf or the uh, lotus leaf has a hydrophobic surface. Water runs over, uh, doesn't stick to that. And we are looking at the same phenomena in aerodynamics when we look at the flow, uh, ship aerod hydrodynamics, we are looking at how to make it so water doesn't stick over it and it impacts in uh, uh, performance of that ship or that uh, water body which whatever we are looking at. My name is Tilly and my question is why do we copy life? If I don't get the inspiration from nature, I will start working on the same problem and try to reinvent. It's always better to learn from nature which had millions of years to evolve and optimize a particular system. So we can look at that and we can save lot of time in trial and error. So if we can replicate that, it will help us to overcome that challenge and in a shorter span of time. We, we choose, if we choose not to, we'll be reinventing the wheel and spending that much time to get to that point. That's all the time we have for this podcast. Before we go, here's the joke. Really? Yep. Why did the bacteria cross the microscope? Why? To get to the other slide. <sighs> I get to do the joke next time. And speaking of next time, we have so many questions about biomimicry that we're producing another episode. Look for that soon. Thank you for listening to our podcast. If you want to learn more about science topics, be sure to subscribe to the Science Trek podcast. And for more information about biomimicry and other science topics, check out the Science Trek website. You'll find it at sciencetrek.org. Funding for Science Trek is provided by the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, the Idaho National Laboratory, and supporters like you. Thank you.